Hi friends, morning. I am Dr. Ashutosh Gupta, and um, I am a consultant in fetal medicine. So today we shall talk about uh, utero placental insufficiency, right? So the baby has got an yolk sac, uh, which supplies the nutrition to the baby at something around by seven weeks, and from seven to nine weeks there is an yolk sac to placental transfer. The placenta starts forming at nine weeks and gets completed by twelve weeks. right so the placental invasion into the myometrial vessels happen both as in number as well as in depth so myometrial invasion has to has has to happen adequately by 12 weeks right so first trimester ultrasound with doppler is 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 the, is the most essential ultrasound as far as the well being of the baby is concerned right so we can do uh, a a very fantastic ultrasound so as to see uh, how the baby is growing and how the structures are being formed and all those stuff but then to see for the dopplers it is also very very important and mandatory right because uh, with this uh, advancement of the technologies and the techniques then also this utero placental insufficiency stands as the most commonest reason for the maternal mortality and the morbidity so we are still not able to decrease the maternal mortality because then we uh, sort of an uh, overlook this uh, sort of an utero placental insufficiency right so uh, the first trimester ultrasound along with doppler is is essential and it is mandatory okay and uh, with the subsequent slide cycle show you how uh, uh, if it is being overlooked and if we miss on this window of opportunity to act in time can lead to lot of complications high bilateral uterinary resistance this is the right and the left uterines with a very high resistance leading to placentomegaly placentomegaly we can uh, assume as to be thyromegaly when we are having an iodine deficiency this is a reversal of a wave in ductus venosus and then we are having an absent end diastolic flow leading to uh, a growth restriction and a mesenteric ischemia leading to an pathological ecogenic bowel right and ecogenic bowel in this setting can be because of the mesenteric ischemia that the blood is not getting onto the gut and we are having a mesenteric ischemia that leads to grade 2 oblique grade 3 ecogenic bowel right so to assume it to be aneuploidy would be fraught with lot of uh, we are missing on to the utero placental insufficiency wala thing so this leads to an iugr of something around 2 weeks plus right So at the time of the first time start ultrasound, then we are doing a nuclear scan. Apart from seeing the baby in great detail, the uterine arteries they have to be looked around very thoroughly, right? So she is a prime gravida, so meaning thereby that a personal or a family history of a PIH or preeclampsia might not be that forthcoming, right? And uh, th- this uh, gives us the window of opportunity of identifying the abnormal uterine arteries, abnormal uterine artery placentations. and uh, therefore that gives us some time to start up with a ecosporin and a low molecular weight heparin okay so this window of opportunity is very very important to start up with this medical therapy so that we can salvage this situation because this low molecular weight heparin also takes its own sweet time in identifying and in in correcting this uh, utero placental insufficiency in something around 2 weeks so if this this is being delayed and if if everything goes uh, down the hill then the beneficial effect of even those low molecular heparin might not come across right so the 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 maternal blood pressure might also increase in response of this utero placental insufficiency and an absent end diastolic flow in the umbilical artery because when the baby is crying is asking for blood and asking for help the mother increases her blood pressure so the pih and preeclampsia is the effect it is not the cause so probably we need to understand the cause is a utero placental insufficiency that probably we could we should have picked it up at 12 weeks and we would have started uh, um, the the low molecular weight heparin and the ecosprin at the first instance right and uh, and and then probably we could have uh, um, hoped to salvage this situation first trimester ultrasound with an doppler is an absolute necessity so as to identify any abnormal invasion of the uterine arteries or a utero placental insufficiency so as to lead to an decisive treatment call it is also it is it is also warranted with this low molecular weight heparin so because we have to work in that window of opportunity that is available to us thank you very much for your patient listening